Stan Gibalisco here from intergalactic space to take a brief visit to your planet Earth to talk a little bit about the vacuum tube equivalents of the common emitter, common base, and common collector bipolar transistor circuits, or the common source, common gate, and common drain uh, field effect transistor circuits. I covered those circuits in other videos. Uh, and if you will go to my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition, you'll find a little bit of a discussion about vacuum tubes in Chapter 29. And, in particular, you will find this circuit right here, Figure 29-4, which shows a common cathode amplifier configuration or circuit configuration using a triode vacuum tube. The filament is not shown. This is an indirectly heated cathode. Triode tube. There's the cathode, the control grid, the only grid in this tube, and the anode or the plate. We apply the input to the grid. This resistor provides grid bias as does... This resistor limits the current through the device. This resistor provides the appropriate grid bias. We might want to connect a negative, a small negative voltage here instead of directly grounding this. Depends on the type of vacuum tube, but we would want to operate generally in class A in this example, meaning that the operating point is at the middle of the straight line portion of the characteristic curve of the device, that is plate current as a function of grid voltage. If you aren't familiar with all of that, you can get my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, and learn a little more about amplifier classes. I have also done some videos uh, in this playlist on amplifier classes. Uh, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics Miscellany, this playlist. Go to that playlist on my YouTube channel. You will find some discussion about how those classes of amplification or operation are generally configured. We take the output from the plate circuit by tapping a coil and then here's the high voltage. That's one thing about vacuum tubes. They need high voltage and that voltage is capable of driving a lethal current through your body should you come into contact with it. Uh, these are old uh, Old devices, kind of relics, vacuum tubes are, but not entirely. Here's a grounded grid configuration. Now, this is often used in radio frequency power amplifiers, even today. Ham radio uh, linear amplifiers will employ this technique. We apply the input to the cathode rather than to the grid. We still take the output from the plate circuit in the same way as we do with the grounded cathode. Sometimes this is called common cathode. Common grid, you won't hear that terribly often. It's more often referred to as grounded grid. This is figure 29-5 from Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 5th edition. Now I did not include a grounded plate or cathode follower in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, but I will show that circuit to you here. This is the analog of the uh, grounded, uh, uh, the grounded um, drain field effect transistor circuit or the grounded collector bipolar transistor circuit, also known as emitter follower, source follower. This is sometimes also called a cathode follower, and it works just about the same way as a source follower field effect transistor circuit does. We take the output from the cathode by tapping a coil. Then this resistor here limits the current through the device. And you can identify the grounded plate circuit because the plate is at signal ground through this bypass capacitor. So that is how those three circuits are configured. The grounded cathode. The grounded grid and the grounded plate or cathode follower. Note that here the cathode is still grounded but it is not at signal ground.
One thing we might include that I did not include here in the grounded cathode circuit is a bypass capacitor around this resistor to ensure that the cathode remains at signal ground. Some circuits use that, some don't. It kind of depends on the application and the type of vacuum tube. So there you go, that's just all that in a summary nutshell for you. Now back to intergalactic space where, arguably, I belong. Stangibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.